So, as some of you might know, I co-host a podcast with Keith from the Rag and Bone Brown YouTube channel. It's a pretty highbrow affair, addressing the big woodworking issues of the day. Now, we've just issued a challenge, and that is the make something out of a pallet challenge. So, I thought I'd better have a go at it myself. I couldn't think what to make, but then I remembered I had Bosch Professional here the other week doing a photo shoot of recording me make some things. And one of the things we made was a console table made of pallet wood. Got it done in one day, so it turned out kind of um, acceptable, let's say. Anyway, I thought I'll revisit that project, but this time I can spend a few days on it and try and do it properly. So, got a pile of slats, now just get them denailed. They're all denailed and I've ended up with four different sizes of slats. Okay, that's not too bad because three of these sizes are the same thickness and that's the most important thing. I need the bits the same thickness as for the top of the table, I'm gonna make a herringbone pattern. Now I could plane them, but I'm lazy, so them being the same thickness is the best option. Now, I need a sub base for these pallets to attach to. So I've had a look through my extensive pallet library and found a plywood one. Now I'm filming this before the podcast has gone up with the rules of this challenge but I've got a sneaking suspicion I'm breaking them already. What I'll do is I'll put a link under this video to the podcast so you can listen to the announcement and I'll put a link to our website where we'll have the written rules. But anyone that knows me knows I don't play by the rules. Also, I think being one of the hosts of the challenge, I can't really enter it myself. As you can imagine from a pallet, this is some pretty ragged wood. So I have two pieces that I'm gonna laminate together. This should strengthen it and make it more stable and hopefully this will work. And now I need to get this board all squared up. It's going to rip the sides parallel to each other on the table saw and then use the track saw to get the end square. So with the back of board all squared up, we can move back to the slats. So as I say, the same thickness, but they all need to be brought down to the same width. So first, I'm gonna get one edge plane down 
and then rip them to the same width on the table saw. Before I can actually get those slats attached to this, I've got a few more jobs to do. The first is marking out where they need to go. So I'm going to strike a center line down this and then mark out a 45 at the bottom to kind of indicate where the first two need to go. The ones after that should be self-explanatory. To work out the 45, from the edge to the center is 21 centimeters. So I've measured up on my center line 21 centimeters. Then I can just draw from that mark down to the corner. Now looking at herringbone patterns, it looks like there's many ways you can do it. Well, that's probably wrong. Herringbone is probably one thing, but there's definitely loads of ways you can produce the kind of chevrony pattern. The way I'm gonna do it is gonna have one long piece and then another piece is slightly shorter and that just repeats up. So I need to cut these down to two different lengths. And I'm gonna do that on the miter saw. Now to get these slats attached and to do it, what I'm gonna use is some construction adhesive because I think that's going to be better than just wood glue because these are a bit rough and this is better at filling in any gaps. And the nail gun. Now when I did it last time I put the glue on the back of the slats but because bits of it hang over the side there was glue hanging over the side and it went kind of everywhere and made a mess and when I come and trim it all back in a bit, all the offcuts have glue on. So this time I'm gonna try putting the glue onto the back of board. Now I can line a board up with the first marks I made, getting the point on the center. Of course, Putting the glue on has made it slightly hard to see what I'm doing. So maybe this wasn't the best idea. But actually, as soon as the first one's on, you don't need to see anymore. <sighs> Top tip, plug your nail guns in. They work better. Who knew? So the second bit goes along my 45 degree line and butts up against the first one. Now everyone after that, I shouldn't need the lines at all. I'm just gonna reference off the ones that went before. I've given the glue a chance to dry on this. Now I can trim one edge flush using the track saw, get the other edge parallel to it on the table saw, and then back to the track saw to trim the ends.
With the sides all trimmed up, I've exposed that not very nice plywood. So I want to cover that up. So with some more slats, I'm going to make a frame to go around the outside. This will increase the tabletop size, which is good. Make it neater. Also, these can be slightly thicker than the tabletop, making it look chunkier and hiding the fixings for the legs in a bit. So let's get these cut down on the mitre saw. To get this frame put on, I'm gonna turn this thing upside down. Then, when they're on the bench, they should be flush with the top. So I'm gonna get them on with some construction adhesive and using the nail gun, the same as the top. Plugged in this time, after years, I might finally be getting good at this old woodworking game. Frames all on, but the screw holes, no, nail holes, nail holes and pallets, nail holes and other bits in this. So what I'm gonna do is mix up a little paste of some sawdust out of my extractor and some wood glue and get it all filled and leave it to dry. The glue's all dry on this, so I can't put it off any longer and do the bit I've been dreading and that's sanding. It's pretty rough, so I'm gonna start at 40 grit and work all my way up to 240. Now my plan from the beginning was to stain this. I had like a dark oak stain that I was gonna put on there, but now I've got it sanded down. I really quite like the blondness of this wood. So I had a look for my finishes and I've got one that's an extra pale varnish that doesn't yellow. So I'm gonna get that applied. So I would normally use a hard wax oil for something like this, but this varnish says it's water and heat resistant. And obviously varnishes are pretty hard wearing, so probably a good choice for a coffee table. Also, this stuff is water-based, so it's quick drying, and I'll get a couple of coats on this today. First coat's dry, so now I'm just gonna give it a quick rub down and get a second coat on. Finish is all dry on this, so now it's time to get some legs on. And what I've got is some hairpin legs. Now, this kit does come with some screws. But I don't trust screws on legs. I prefer to use some threaded inserts. So I'm gonna get it marked out with a pencil where they need to go and then I can get them drilled out and installed. I was up for the inserts that you can store with an Allen key and then I can get a bit put in the driver and install them in no time. So I don't have to mess around with washers. I've ordered some pan headed bolts. Now I can just get these legs screwed in. In with the screws, it also came with some little rubber feet. 
Now these should just snap on the end and that will just protect my wooden floor. That's it all done, so let's get it set up in its new home. So that's it, my entry to the Workshop Banter Pallet Wood Challenge. So I'll put a link down below to the episode where we announced all this challenge. Also a link to the website where I put the rules. Um, and I'm sure you'll make things that are much better than this, which uh, shouldn't be much of a challenge for you. Uh, but don't feel you can't make a coffee table. I'll put a link down to these legs below if you want to check those out. If you make a herringbone coffee table, there's only one rule, and that's don't make it embarrassingly better than mine. Uh, so, yeah, good luck, everyone, and I can't wait to see what you make. So, thanks for watching, thanks to my patrons, and please subscribe for more videos.